Hi guys, welcome back to our Android Kotlin to do tutorial. My name is Tensor. In the last tutorial series, we built out the data model and then we built out the store by way of creating two interfaces, one called a store, one called a renderer, and then creating a to do store. Now we want to finish this application. And to do that, we need to think about two different things. We need to think about how do we want our main activity to run, and we need to think about the actual UI of our application. We'll work on the UI first because that's probably the easiest way to go about doing this. For a moment, let's just talk about what a to-do app should look like. With our to-do app, we just want to have an input box with a button that allows the user to input the to-do. And then when the to-do gets inputted, it goes into a list and the list, each item has a checkbox and the checkbox indicates whether or not the to-do has visibility. So if it's checked, then it's a completed to-do. So how can we create this type of UI inside of an Android application? Well, the first thing we want to get is our input box. So we create an edit text and we're going to give this an ID of edit text with an undercase E. And then I will input the various DPs that we want. The width of this will be 274 DP and the height of it will be 43 DP. And then we'll have a margin around the end, start and top that will be 8 DP. We can take a look at what this looks like just by simply opening up the design tab. You'll see that it's just a simple input box and our button will go right here next to it. So we can create a button view for our button. We'll call the button add button. We'll give it a layout width of wrap content. So it will wrap the text inside of it. And then we'll also give it a layout height of wrap content. Again, it'll wrap the text inside of it. We'll give it a layout margin with a padding of 8 dp on the end and then on the top as well, just like our input box. And then the text inside of it will just say add to do. If we look at our design here though, you can see that the button is actually to the left of the input box and it's actually overlapping the input box. Now we could drag it out like this. This is a perfectly acceptable way of creating a UI. If we go back into the text, you'll see that now we have these two fields, the layout editor absolute X and layout editor absolute Y, and they're filled in with various DP values. There's actually a better way to do this. And that is to make use of the constraint layout that we have all of this inside of. We can use these elements app layout constraint end of. We can tell it we want it to be at the end of the parent and we want it to be at the top of the parent. This essentially says to the layout that we want this particular button to sit at the top right corner of our layout. And now you can see that the add to do button has a nice bit of spacing next to the input box. Now of course we should apply these constraints to our input box as well so that it will be more consistent with our button. In this case, we can say, okay, well, we want the layout constraint of the end to start of to be right next to our add button. And then we can set the constraint for start to start of as the parent, and then the top to top of as the parent. And now they're fairly level. This added a little bit of spacing and it added this and pushed it down a little bit so that it is a little bit more consistent with our button. Now that we have our input box and our button, we want to add what's called a list view. We give it an ID of list view and we'll have it match parent. So it will have a width that will go across our entire screen. And then we'll give it a height of 425 DP. This means that each of the individual elements inside of the list view has that height. And then we'll have the top of it be constrained to the bottom of our input box, which is edit text. If we look at the design, we have this nice little layout now, and this is a fairly nice way of doing things. Now there is another element that we could use in this case and that's called the recycler view. Recycler views are nice for when you have large lists, whereas list views are, I'd say better for simple lists. A recycler view reuses the cells while it's scrolling up and down, and it also decouples the list from its container, whereas the list view holds the list inside of it. Also, the recycler view implements a common list of animations automatically. We wouldn't have to go ahead and put a bunch of animations on our list view. For those of you who are curious about recycler views, in one of the upcoming projects that we will be doing, we will actually be using a recycler view. Okay, so now we have the basic idea of our UI, but this isn't complete. We haven't implemented any way for us to change which to-dos we see based on the visibility of these to-dos. We wanna be able to select an item from say a menu that will allow us to automatically filter all the completed to-dos out of our active to-dos. 
To get this to work properly, we're going to implement what's called an FAB or a floating action button. We can just input our floating action button like any other view. We give it an ID. In this case, I'm just going to call it FAB. Its width will be wrap content. Height will be wrap content. We'll give it a margin at the bottom of 16 and a margin at the end of 16, so to the right of the item. And then we'll use our constraint layout to put it at the bottom right of our screen. We're also going to put an image on top of it. It's just a white plus that sits on top of the fab button. Now I'm not going to go too much into how to create a piece of vector art in Android. If you want to take a look at this source code, of course, it will be on GitHub. Now that we have our main activity XML finished, we want to create what is essentially a template for each of the items that fit inside of our list view. So we create a new layout resource file. We'll call it to do item and we'll leave the constraint layout because we want to use that. Inside of this view, we want to create a text view and a checkbox. This is what it's going to look like. We have the checkbox on the left and the to do text on the right. For our text view, we're going to give it an ID of text view. Our layout width will be 0 dp. We'll have a height of 32 dp and then we'll have a margin and start and top of 8 dp. I put filler text in here. This doesn't really matter because it doesn't actually show up in the application since we're going to be manipulating the text of our to-dos. And then we want to set the text size of our to-dos to 18 SP. As for the constraint layout part of the actual text view, we want it to be connected to the parent from the end to the end of, and then the start to the end of will be our checkbox, and then the top to the top of will be our parent. For our checkbox, we'll just give this a ID of checkbox. We will wrap content on both width and height, and then we'll give it a margin start and margin top of ADP. And then for start to start of, we'll give it parent and then top to top of will also give it parent and this will give us what we have right here on the screen now we have our ui sorted out let's jump into our main activity and actually build out the application we want our main activity to extend both app compat activity and then our renderer interface with the to do model inside of it we can implement our renderer function just by alt entering on the main activity class and we'll leave this function for now so that we can add some properties first. First, we want to create a late init variable called store, and this will store all of our data. So it will be a to-do store type. So to get our data out of our to-do store, we want to make use of our view model library. So inside of our onCreate method, we want to say store equal view model providers dot of, and then we put in the activity, which is this main activity. So we put in this, and then we want to get from our to-do store class java and then we will implement a subscription so we want this activity to subscribe to our observable which is our store by saying store dot subscribe and then we put in this which is the activity class and then we're going to put in our map state to props which will be a function that we create below this map state to props function will allow us to basically filter through the to do's that are not visible and we're actually going to implement this sort of like we would implement another property so we'll call it a private val and we'll bind it to map state to props and then we'll set this equal to function which is coming from our Android Arch core util function and we're inputting a to do model and then we're getting back a to do model. Inside of this function we'll create another variable called keep which will be a function that takes in a to do and outputs a boolean and then we'll have a when block which takes in our it which is our to do model and looks at the visibility of it and then we want to check each of the visibility states. For our visibility all we just want to return back true for each of the items inside of our model and then for visibility active we'll take in each of our to do's and then we'll negate the to do status. Then if a to do is completed we'll just say okay to do and then we'll set this equal to the to do status. So our keep function is going to return true based on the visibility of the to-dos. If you remember, our to-do status is false by default. So if we want to get all of our to-dos, we just set everything equal to true by default. If we just want to get the active to-dos, aka the to-dos that are set to false, then we want to negate that false so that it is equal to true. If we want to get all the to-dos that are completed, then we just need to read that status because it's going to be true. So then down here at the return statement, we call an annotation for our function, which is up here. Then essentially what we're doing with this is we're creating a new to-do model list that has been filtered using this keep function. So we go it.copy and then we set to-dos equal to it.to-dos.filter and then we pass in the keep function. 
The filter function is a bit like a map function, except it allows us to filter through our list of elements based on a Boolean value. So if that Boolean value comes back as true, then we keep that element. If it comes back as false, then we discard that element from the list. With this particular function, that's exactly what we're doing. Every single time we change the visibility inside of our fab, we'll get a different subset of our elements. Inside of our onCreate method, we want to add a onClick listener to our button. So this is the button that allows us to add to-dos to our data store. And the way we do this is we bring in the add button element, then we use set on click listener. And then inside of this closure, we call the store variable. And then we use the dispatch function. We pass in add to-do, edit text, dot text to string. So this will just take the text out of the edit text box and then convert it to a string and then push it into our store, which then puts it into our list of to-dos. We want to set another on click listener for our fab. So we bring in our fab and then we just call set on click listener and inside of this we're going to run a function called open dialog. And before we get this running we want to add some strings to our values strings.xml file. We want to create a filter title and this will just say filter the to do's and this will be the title of our menu. And then we want to create a string array with a name of filter options and inside of it we want to have three items all active and completed. And these will be the options that pop out when we click on the fab. If we go back into our open dialog function we can create a value called options and we can get our resources get string array and then call our array filter options and convert it into a list. Then we want to call a function called selector. This is a function that we get from our ANCO library. And this allows us to select the XML string title. So the filter title, put in the options, and then we can iterate through our options by index and by element. And then we'll use a when block to match on the index of all of our options. For index one, we want this to be visibility active. For index two, we want this to be visibility complete, and then everything else will make it visibility all. And then to actually make this work, we want to call our store variable, and then we want to call the dispatch method on it, and then we want to pass set visibility with our visible value inside of it. Now let's set up our render function. Remember this is implemented because we've implemented our renderer interface. We want to have model observe this and then we'll call observer with a closure inside of it. We want to call on our list view dot adapter and we want to set this equal to a new class that we'll create called to do adapter. We'll pass in our activity and then the new state variable dot to do's. So this gets all of our to do's, puts them on our list view. And if we have no to do's, then it will automatically just create an empty list so that we don't get a null. We created our render function to allow us to basically bind our data to our UI. And that's essentially what we're using this for. Okay, so now let's create a new class inside of the root directory of our application called to do adapter. We want this to have its own constructor, which takes in the context, which is the context of our activity, and then our to do's, which is our list of to do. And we want to extend array adapter with to do inside of it. This class is essentially what's allowing us to bind the data to our list view. We want to override the method called get view. Inside of this method, we'll create a variable called view. We'll set this equal to convert view. And if there is no view being passed into this method, then we want to inflate a new view from our context. And then we'll inflate our to-do item inside of the parent. And then we won't attach it to root. We get the view and then we want to get the text view, which is the actual text of each of our list views. And we're going to bind this to our to-dos position dot text. And then for our checkbox, we're going to bind this to our to-dos position status. Is. And then we want to return this view from this function. To make things a little bit easier, we also want to override the get item ID method. And for this, we just want to set it equal to to do's position.id. We can now create the rest of the on click listeners that we want to make our application run properly. First, we want to set up our list view by pointing it towards our to do adapter. And we'll pass in the context of the main activity and then an empty list as the initialized state of our to do data. Then we want to create a set on item click listener. And this takes in our adapter view, our view, the index, and the ID. And then all we'll do inside of this closure is run store.dispatch toggle ID with the ID being passed into it. So this makes it so that if we click on one of our list views, 
Then we want to create a on long click listener, and this will allow us to remove the to do's if the user holds on the item on the list view. So we go list view set on item long click listener, and then we're going to call store dispatch remove to do with our ID inside of it. And then because of this needs to pass back a Boolean, we pass back true. All right, so that is our application finished. So let's now run it. There is one minor tweak that we want to make to our application, and that is inside of the add button on click listener. After we dispatch the add to do, we want to set edit to do text to null, and this will clear the input box after we input it to do. We can filter our to do's. I have two of them marked as completed. If I filter by completed, it only shows those two to do's. If I filter by active, it'll only show the one that isn't completed. And if I go back to all, we can see all of them. If I click anywhere on the to-do, it will automatically check the box. So even if I'm clicking over to the right here, it checks the box. And if I click and hold on one of the to-dos like this, it will just delete it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.